The other thing that we ask is that any one of our clients who sells to any customer, but particularly to distributors, we want the CEO's name. We want the CEO's email address. We want the business number in the state in which they incorporate it. And we want the state in which they incorporate it. Um, and if we can get the phone number. So we, we ask our client, hey, if somebody sends you a purchase order before you accept it, because that's when, the, that's when these distributors are most open. They're most willing to do what you want. Once they have the product in hand, they, can, they lock down. I mean, they, they turn into the most, you know, like economist driven, you know, type of, you know, organizations that really work on supply, demand and profitability. And so, but they're open when they're trying to negotiate with you. And so if you have them at the table, say, hey, I'm happy to sell to you. But anytime, you you know, when you guys buy from me, I need to know who the owner is of the company. I need to know how to get a hold of them. So I need their email address and their phone. I need to know where they're incorporated and I need their business. And the reason why we want the UBI or the universe, you know, the universal business identifier, whatever every state calls it, everything. But that's just, again, another like way to get a hold of this person. So that when, because as you explained, the distributors, if if they, you know, if things are going well, they're going to try to take a lot of inventory. They want to try to sell those items. But we've seen it, as you said, a thousand times when things start going sideways, they just start cutting and dropping, you know, they start cutting prices right. and then right. offloading inventory. So to your point, we really like to get our hooks into um, the leadership of the distributor um, and try to get as much personal contact information for that person so that you can call them and you can email them and say, hey, we really need to do something different. The other thing, a lot of times we'll run into clients who have this scenario. And so we actually meet with those, with large inventory holding positions. So there's some tools on Amazon like that you can utilize from Amazon, for instance, like Jungle, there's several that you can use to identify how much inventory third-party sellers are holding of your product. Uh, and the way that they do it is if you put in an item into a, a, a basket, let's say, you know, let's say Nick, you're a third-party seller of my item. I could go to your offer. I could try to buy 100 units. And then Amazon, you know, and I put like 100 units in my basket and say, hey, I'd like to buy this. Amazon will kick back and say, no, you know, only 79 or 38 are available. So that's one way just manually you can check. But there's also tools that do the same. They do just exactly that. And they'll tell you how much inventory your third-party sellers are holding. And then also some of your large distributors if they're on Amazon. And then we actually have calls with them. We call them and say, look, you know, today is June 20th. We are going to end, we're going to take over this item, you know, July 20th. You have four weeks. We don't want you to cut the price. We're going to try to help you move through this inventory, you know, as quickly as possible, but without, to your point, denigrating that price down to $6. Because once a consumer sees that, they're going to definitely wait two, three months before they buy at 35 Because, you know, they're not going to want to waste money. You know, they're going to know, hey, maybe I can wait a couple of weeks to get this item. So, we try to partner in, but to your point, you really got to get your claws and your hands around uh, anybody who's holding inventory. Yeah. So, uh, Oscar, this is a very sensitive thing because you don't want to say no to somebody who's placing out.